Hey everyone, a magic square is a 3x3 matrix filled with distinct integers from 1 to 9, where the sum of every row, column and diagonal is equal to the same number. So when you look at this example, the sum of the first row is 15, the sum of the second row is 15 as well, and the sum of the third row is uh, also 15. And the same applies to all columns and the two diagonals. With this basic information about uh, magic squares, let's look into the following coding problem. We want to convert a given matrix of size 3 by 3 into a magic square at minimal cost. The cost of this conversion is calculated element-wise. So if you want to turn the element A to element B, the cost is the absolute value of A minus B. So for example, let's look at this matrix that is not a magic square yet. But if we change those three entries, we get a magic square. And the cost of this conversion is 6 minus 8 plus 3 minus 4 plus 7 minus 9, which is equal to 5. If you want to give this problem a try, pause this video here and come back after you got your own solution. Otherwise, I will now present my solution. And my solution is actually based on generating all possible magic squares and afterwards comparing the given um, non-magic square to all the possibles and calculating the minimal cost. So actually to get all possible magic squares, there are some steps we can take. So the first step is that we see that the sum of every diagonal column and row must be equal to 15. So let's consider a magic square. Let's call the sum of the first row r. And since the sum of every row is equal to the same number, the sum of the second row is then also r. And the sum of the third row is r as well. So now we can calculate r by saying that 3r is equal to the sum of uh, the numbers from 1 to 9. So 3r is equal to 45, which leaves us with 1r is equal to 15. In the second step of generating all possible magic squares, we use the discovery that there are only eight ways to sum up to 15 when we are limited with the numbers 1 to 9. So for example, we have 1 plus 9 plus 5, 2 plus 8 plus 5, 3 plus 7 plus 5, and you can go through all those combinations and you will see that there are really only eight ways to sum up to 15. And this leads to another step. When we look at all those combinations, we see that 5 is the only number that appears 4 times. All other numbers appear um, 3 times or less. And now when we look at the magic square, the only point that is part of 4 sums is the center. So now we have another fact about magic squares. That is, that the center square is always 5. Now when we count the 1s, for example, we see two 1s. So in every magic square, the 1 has to be in two sums. And when you look at a magic square, you can see that every edge is part of two sums. So we now have this discovery that 1 has to be an edge. And the same applies to the 3, because the 3 appears two times. The 7, because the 7 appears two times. And the 9, because the 9 appears twice. Now we know what the center square has to be, and now we know what the edges have to be. And the last discovery just tells us what the numbers for the corners will be. So now, when we look at the 2, for example, the 2 appears 3 times, and then when we look into the magic square, we see that an edge is part of 3 sums. So this leads to the fact that all corners have to be 2, 4, 6 and 8. And now we have all conditions together to form a magic square. And this allows us to write down all of them. Let's start by filling in those 4 squares. Let's start by inserting 5 to the center. And now let's place the one 
around the five. One has to be an edge, so those are all places the one can be in. And to form the sum 15, the nine has to be always opposite of one. So let's fill in the nine. Now let's make a copy of all those four magic squares, because in the end there will be uh, eight of them. So now let's continue with the three. The three has to be an edge as well. So we have all those possibilities for the three. And yeah, our last edge is the seven. So the seven will be just opposite of three in every square. And actually the positions of all corners are now already defined. So there's just one way in every square to um, insert the corners. You can try it yourself or you can trust me here a bit. So these are all magic squares we can generate. And now that we have this knowledge about all the magic squares, we can return to our coding challenge and this will be very easy now. Um, let's just define a function called magic min cost and pass this function or non magic square. Then let's collect all the possibilities in this um, list here. Then we store our minimal cost in uh, this variable here. In the beginning, this will be uh, infinity. Then we can easily iterate through all the possible magic squares and compare them element wise with our S. Um, we will need two loops for this. One that iterates over the rows and one that iterates through the columns. And then we can just um, add every difference of S and P to our current cost. And at last, see if our current cost is less than our minimum cost. And in this case, update our minimum cost. When we now return the minimum cost at the end, we are basically finished with this problem. I hope you learned something in this video. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. And if you have suggestions for some coding challenges, please let me know. And I hope I'll see you in the next video.